An announcement that was made by Ripple's chief technology officer, David Schwartz, has caused shockwaves to spread throughout the cryptocurrency industry. This piece of news was reported today. In the midst of this legal battle, we can see here from XRP drops that David Schwartz testifies in the SEC vs. Ripple case that Satoshi Nakamoto, the original developer of Bitcoin, presumably held an enormous quantity of XRP back in 2017. The litigation about XRP is in its final stages, and the final verdict is just around the corner. The fact that David Schwartz used the word gigantic to describe Satoshi Nakamoto rather than a lot or a tremendous number of XRP is something that should be taken into consideration. This is a massive bombshell, and it is very crucial to take note of the fact that this flew entirely under the radar. There has been a great deal of conjecture recently over the possibility that Satoshi Nakamoto is actually David Schwartz or one of the other original members of XRP, such as Arthur Brito. Despite the fact that there is no concrete evidence to support this assertion, it is very obvious to me that David Schwartz is or was on a closer relationship with Toshi. Nakamoto, it is mind-boggling that David Schwartz, who is under oath in the courtroom, is going to testify that Satoshi Nakamoto had a significant quantity of XRP. This is going to further stoke the flames that XRP is going to take over the world. Considering that Satoshi is currently praising and holding a significant quantity of XRP, it is clear that he must be aware of something that we are not aware of. This is. Because Bitcoin was intended to be the initial cryptocurrency that Satoshi invented, there is a possibility that the use case for XRP and its pricing were pre-planned from the first introduction. Because it appears that the United States of America has abandoned them, it is possible that the lawsuit was all a part of that strategy to make it easier and faster for them to expand across the globe without the limits that come with being an American firm. In fact, with regard to the lawsuit, we can see from this. Video how former CC Division Chief Christina Littman, who suggested the previous month that the SEC might not appeal the Ripple case, has declared that she believes the SEC will not appeal the case. Put your ears to it. And then there is their argument that there is no reason to be discouraged because in reality, nobody buys XRP. Consequently, it is anticipated that both parties would file cross appeals for the items that they have lost, regardless of when that verdict is made, which is most likely going to be this summer. Therefore, at our subsequent conference, which will take place at the Second Circuit, everyone will once again continue to talk about Ripple. Perhaps by that time, we will have made a choice, but until then, we will continue to discuss it. Thank you, it's Mike. Regarding the appeal of the Ripple, I will remark that I will be eager to see if the parties appeal over that particular issue. In light of the fact that Judge Rakoff and the Terra opinion were in complete disagreement with the reasoning that Judge Torres presented in the Ripple opinion, I believe that there is some speculation that. Coinbase, on the other hand, does not really address the Ripple opinion as much as it does, but it does rather explicitly endorse the philosophy of Terra. I believe that there is some speculation that the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC might just let the Ripple verdict stay there as a district court opinion and not risk pushing it to a circuit level where they could potentially elicit poor law when they have otherwise. Favorable rulings in the aftermath of the Ripple litigation. Therefore, it will be fascinating to observe subsequent to the conclusion of the remedy space whether either side decides to challenge that decision. Due to the fact that this issue has been stretched out for far too long already, and the SEC is obviously waging a losing battle, this would be extremely significant news for cryptocurrency, and of course it would also be significant news for XRP. So after the final verdict is handed down, if the Securities and Exchange Commission CI loses, which is something I believe they have already pretty much lost, and if they choose not to appeal the ruling, then they will have lost. The first piece of good news is that they would not be squandering any more of the money that is provided by the taxpayers. A second benefit would be that they would finally give the go-ahead for the institutional adoption of XRP in the United States. This would also provide official legal regulatory clarity for XRP, making it the first cryptocurrency ever to accomplish this accomplishment. Furthermore, this ruling would help pave the road for the rest of the cryptocurrency industry to follow Ripple's example, which is something that many people have already been doing in the course of the legislation. The gradual transition that we are currently experiencing will then abruptly explode, and restrictions will be implemented in full force. This will happen all of a sudden. As we can see from this instance in Cyprus, they are not going to legislate cryptocurrency and decentralized finance out of existence. This is due to the fact that rules will lay the groundwork for the introduction of real institutional money into the area, which will amount to trillions upon trillions upon trillions of dollars. Pay close attention. Doesn't it seem like it would be quite simple for a regulator to declare that cryptocurrency is illegal and then ban it? Nevertheless, they have not done that. 
What you have discovered is that regulators all over the world have been attempting to navigate and figure out what the appropriate way is to put frameworks in place, as well as how to function within these frameworks. At this very moment, it is almost like a race. And the reason for this is that regulators themselves acknowledge they. they acknowledge that we are an economy that is dependent on ourselves. Bringing with us everything from jobs to GDP development, the regulator wants to put in place the appropriate framework because of the fact that we bring all of these things with us. At the beginning of the year 2000, Singapore and Asia were most likely ahead of the curve. It has caught up to Hong Kong. In recent times, Japan has been considering modifying their regulations. There is also something that is now happening in Korea with relation to the retail markets, for example. And I believe that within the realm of cryptocurrency, trading shops like ours, market makers, we are integral, and it is up to us to set the gold standard, whether it be in terms of regulatory and compliance standards, as well as the appropriate way to conduct business. This is a very different situation from traditional finance, which is different in that it is very different from traditional finance. In light of this, the approach that we take, particularly within companies like GSR, and the manner in which we carry it out, is to involve the relevant regulatory bodies. We join the Hong Kong Medical Association at these roundtables. We take a seat and communicate with the mass. In addition to the guys in London, we also talk to the people in Dubai. The reason for this is that, in any case, they do not assert that they are experts in everything. They are looking for our opinions. Consequently, when you put something like that together, you get the impression that there is a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel. In addition, will there be a situation similar to a game of whack-a-mole over the course of the next few months? Not a doubt. However, you need to take a look at the current state of regulation in comparison to where it was six months ago and where it was five years ago. Moreover, we are making steady progress in a significant way. It seems to you that things are only going to pick up speed from here on out. To be sure, that is not everything. The former chief executive officer of Bridgewater, Dave McCormick, stated once again in this interview that rules regarding stablecoins are on the way. For the simple reason that the United States of America will undoubtedly fall behind if they are not recognized the following week. For now, it's either do or die. Pay close attention. We are currently in the midst of the next major wave of innovation with blockchain and cryptocurrency. If the United States of America does not accept it, we will fall further and further behind. In addition, by embracing it, we have the potential to generate a great deal of innovation and great jobs. I've been around for a number of different waves of invention, whether it was the personal computer and the internet or some of the recent advancements that have occurred in the field of artificial intelligence. This is one of those waves that we have to welcome with open arms. The consequences of this for national security are quite evident, and they are as follows blockchain-based and cryptocurrency-based systems have relatively rare instances of illegal behavior, which accounts for somewhere between 0.3 and 5% of all transactions. But it provides a roadmap for those in charge of national security and prosecutors to follow in order to zero in on illegal activities. All of the national security and legal professionals that I spoke with are of the opinion that it provides a genuine means of eradicating illegal behavior rather than fostering its growth. Consequently, for all of these reasons and because it is crucial to Pennsylvania, a job development engine for Pennsylvania, I have welcomed this and encouraged lawmakers to build out a legislative framework that would allow innovation to continue. Now, isn't it a mighty convenience that Ripple is going to be releasing their very own stable, which will replace USDT, and that in the not-too-distant future, only USDC and RUSDC and 